Lute Olson. He had to rebuild, lost four starters from last year's uh, national final team in his 19th year here in the desert. And here's his starting five with Luke Walton, the junior son of the All-America Bill. Channing Fry, a freshman. Rick Anderson, a junior, didn't play last year, redshirted. And in the backcourt, Celine Stoudemire, the nation's leading free throw shooter with All-America candidate Jason Gardner. The officials are Ted Valentine, Robert Donato, and Reggie Greenwood, and we're underway. And Arizona with the first call. Johnny Salvi stealing that tap on the way up. Dick, as this game goes on, we'll get into some of the unusual statistics between these two teams that obviously both are going to show they have a chance to be Sweet 16 or better type clubs in this year's NCAA play. It figures to be a fast-paced, up-tempo game. Both teams like to run. Anderson inside to Luke Walton. The 6'8 junior will move. I thought he was going to dish off to Fry, but Walton had good inside power position. Now let's watch this zone. It's very unusual to take one of your big men and put him at the point position. And that's what Walton does. He plays all the way up and down the middle, cutting off passing lanes. Really great way to utilize a man that understands the game. Butler with the first Connecticut shot, and it's rebounded by Stoudemire, the freshman. And you can see right away, Lou Olson is going to send five guys to the defensive glass to try to stop this rebounding advantage that Connecticut has. And there's Okafor, who's on his way to being the all-time shot blocker in UConn history, gets one early today. And Okafor at the other end ties it at two. Any guy that can block eight shots in a game against Oklahoma, a team that's got as good a quick athletes as there is in the country, is a shot blocker. A human bogo stick, this uh, Emeka Okafor, he's 6'9". There of individual skills in the backcourt. Walton uh, tries to get it to Fry. It's taken away by Okafor. This is Robertson. Selvey, the only senior. The left-hander is short on the shot, and Walton comes swooping in for the rebound. Now there's Walton who's playing the point. Great pass ahead. And Fry misses the easy shot, but gets a second chance, and Arizona leads 4-2. How about the versatility of Walton? He's playing the top on this zone. And then he's all the way underneath to get a rebound. Then he throws the lead pass like a guard right in the money to Fry. Well, you heard Calhoun admiring his passing talent. At 6'8", he leads the Pac-10 conference in assists. Six a game for a four. Robertson left alone, and he drills the three. And shooting on lead. Shooting over 50% from beyond three. He is the one pure shooter that Connecticut has. And you Lute Olsen, you cannot afford to let him get an open look. Gardner looking for his first shot of the game. There it is. Okafor can't handle the rebound. On bounds to Arizona. Gardner was shooting 37. Here you see Walton that hit ahead pass right off the dribble. Fry happened to miss it, but came back to get his own rebound and put it in. Stoudemire, the left-hander from Portland. Oh, great steal. Stripped away by Talik Brown. He has Walton to beat and does. Out on the break, something that Lou Olson talked about at the top of the show. One of the things Connecticut does as well as anybody in the country. Off the steal, off the rebound, they will move it on out of there, much like we saw Kansas do effectively against this Arizona team. And Robertson apparently uh, Either a took cut a shot in the mouth or face, and he's going to be taken back to the Connecticut bench. Ben Gordon, ben Gordon coming in. A, a real good adjustment here for Jim Calhoun because he's got a freshman that has a lot of the same abilities. A terrific shooter and scorer. Gordon wearing number four. He's 6'2", out of Mount Vernon, New York, a high school that has produced so many terrific collegiate players. Stoudemire has trouble on that weave and takes it inside to Fry and another block by Okafor. Terrific job by Okafor cutting off not only the drive but then having the quickness to get back for the block. Quick pass inside to Karan Butler and he has the eight footer not there. Walton with a rebound and a foul. It'll go against Connecticut. Go back and see what happened to Tony Robertson. You get a little, little elbow right here. There was that steal by Brown. You see the elbow right in the uh, right hand side of Robertson's jaw. Could be a tooth or something. He's down there being looked at by the doctor. And that's a tough one. When you have blood, you can put a tape on a hand or an arm 
but when it's inside the mouth, really difficult. Just and obviously, if there's any blood, the guy can't be on the floor. Foul away from the ball as Gordon and Stoudemire become entangled. You saw Justin Brown, the seven-foot center, the junior for UConn, in for the first time. Foul on Gordon. There's Brown. Trailing 7-4, Arizona with the ball, and Stoudemire from way outside, and the cousin of Damon misses there. Anderson gives the Cats a second chance, and Gardner from three. He's been cold of late, but Walton left alone for the easy rebound score. No block out on the weak side so far. Gardner and Stoudemire, with decent looks, have not been close to hitting. As I said before, Jason Gardner is a streak shooter. And Roberts, or it's Gordon outside. No, Talik Brown who drills the three, and it's a 10-6 Husky lead. Really good news for Connecticut. Brown, who's not known for his shooting, and off and running again on that break. This time, Gordon. And the Huskies now with a 12-6 advantage. And you see now why Lute Olsen was concerned about UConn's ability to get down the court. They're one of the fastest teams in the league. They're in the country. Good dish again by Walton. Second outstanding assist in this basketball game. That time gets it inside and a beautiful lob pass with touch. With Anderson's first points for Arizona. They've changed their zone now. Walton is on the wing. They've got Gardner up on top. Brown again, way short this time. And Anderson, uh, does he call time? Yes, before going out of bounds. Arizona with a timeout. We play four minutes, 35 seconds. The visitors from Connecticut lead by four. Perfect pass to Fry. And although Fry didn't connect initially, he was able to put it back in. Look at Walton. Hit ahead perfectly. Soft hands. That time, Arizona beating Connecticut at their own game. Three turnovers by Arizona, none by UConn, and the Huskies have taken advantage to lead it 12 to 8. And with Talik Brown at the top of the key, another block this time by Walton. Terrific play. Isaiah Fox just into the game, battling for the rebound, and the foul goes against uh, UConn. Uh, Dick, one of the things that Jim Calhoun has to play against now is that Arizona, with Gardner at the point in this zone, has dropped back almost to the foul line. Telling Talik Brown, hey, you might have made one. We're going to see if you can make the second one today. So Jim Calhoun will have to make an adjustment there. You can't let the zone pack in that much. That last foul was on Talik Brown. Five minutes into this first half, Stoudemire has it batted away. No, he said he's off his knee and it's UConn the other way. I think Butler got a piece of it and it went right on to Stoudemire's leg. Okafor has returned now for UConn. A big shot blocker, and what an impressive young man he is. Man for man now. First time Arizona has gotten out of the zone just to change things up. Got two coaches, Dick, as you said, have won over 600 games, and it is a pleasure to watch guys that really know how to coach this game. And it's Ben Gordon, a freshman, hitting the three. And UConn opens up its biggest lead of the game. Five for Gordon off the bench. Stoudemire, the best on-ball defender for Arizona. But I think he was surprised with Gordon's, first of all, confidence that he'll take the shot. We saw that yesterday in practice. And he touches it. If he's got the look, he's going to put it up. Gardner looking for his first points. Good fighting over the screen by Brown. Walton battles and loses it out of bounds. With a pressure defense, and this UConn team has not allowed anyone they've played this year to shoot better than 45%. Part of it is being a... The castling defense. Well, Arizona, pretty good assist turnover ratio, plus 33 on the year. But surprisingly, their opponents are plus 44. Karan Butler from the corner. Selby can't handle the rebound. Anderson comes down with it for Arizona. So far, Lou Dawson has to be happy that Connecticut is not dominating the boards. Arizona just a plus 0.8 on rebounding advantage this year. Look at that. Okafor fly in and save the ball. And it's UConn the other way. Dick, we know he's got a 3.8 academic average, but he also is one of those guys that takes academic intelligence and moves it over to basketball as well. That was a very smart play that that young man showed for a freshman shot blocker. A look at the Pac-10 standings, and you can see what, how contentious it is out here in the West with USC and Oregon sharing the lead. California, one of the surprise teams. Uh, watch out for Stanford. Lou Dolson uh, told us yesterday he feels that uh, they may be the team to beat for the title. 
It's interesting to see the schedule. We'll get into that a little bit more of what's coming up for these teams in the Pac-10 because Oregon's got a rough road to hold the rest of the way. Will Bynum in the game for the first time. Good job by Anderson. Again, picking up the loose ball. Gets a lot of garbage points. Well, both teams uh, going to the bench early today. Gordon fires from long range. Picked off by Bynum, freshman from Chicago. Bynum could not afford to lay off and help inside when he's guarding Gordon. Walton with one of his many terrific passes. Passes up the shot, takes it in low, batted around, and boy, that Oka for us. How many arms does he have? To Lake Brown, described by Calhoun as a one-man fast break, couldn't connect there, and it's Walton to the other end and Bravo. traveling the call. Pretty good job by Hazelton to get in the way. He's, a, he's got good speed. Walton took the chance that he'd get fouled right here. Anticipated the foul. Didn't get it. That'll work on Sunday, but they called it on Saturday. 15-10 <laughs> the score with 12.39 showing on the clock here in the first half. As uh, Johnny Selby returns for the Huskies. You know, a lot of substitutions right now, but two things that are pretty consistent for Arizona. And that is Jason Gardner and Walton usually play about 36 minutes or more per game. Gardner's been the 40-minute man so many times, including that game last year in the NCAA championship, 40 minutes against Duke. You see the turnover table, 8-1, to one, has really played the Connecticut's hand as Gordon takes it inside, and Okafer with a jam and a foul. Freshman to freshman. Gordon known as a, primarily as a shooter, but also a great penetrator there. Okafor again showing a lot of intelligence. Stays right where he needs to be. Look at his hand position. Waiting for the ball, beautifully done by the freshman. Isaiah Fox with his first foul, and Okafor goes to the line. He took anthropology, his first semester, anthropology, biology, English, calculus, uh, a very tough first semester and comes away with a 3.77. The only B was in advanced English as a freshman. What an what all-around young kid he is. Fox. Good spin move, but Okafor there again to deny. He is a smart young man. Stays on the floor. Beautifully done. Oh, and Gordon can hit the reverse. And Butler blocked and out of bounds off. Connecticut. Boy, the big freshman from both teams doing a job. Fox that time blocking a shot on one of the premier forwards in the country who is a great finisher inside. Right on it. Of course, last year you had the block of Lauren Woods, a supposed block on Robertson that changed things for Connecticut's win in that game. Contested play. Anderson Oka. blocked by Okafor. That's three already, plus a couple that he has uh, forced the Arizona shooter to rearrange his thinking. Well, one of the things that you can see right away if you're going to play Connecticut and you're scouting them, you have got to play him as the all-time denier, so don't expect him not to be there. See Fox go off. He picks up his second foul. Timeout in Tucson. Welcome back to Arizona. A look at the Big East standings in the East. Connecticut off to an unbeaten start. They've already taken Miami and St. John's with victories. Uh, encouraging the fans of the Huskies that this could be another banner year. Take a look. Syracuse, for the first time in 23 years, Connecticut will not play Syracuse. They don't play Pittsburgh, and they don't play Notre Dame. So three of the top teams over there in the other division will not be faced by Connecticut. So that sure helps them in the schedule. They lead by eight here against Arizona, and that despite the fact their star and leading a shooter, Karan Butler, is 0 for 5 from the field. Here's Butler. Robertson back in the game, so they got that uh, cut fixed up. Malik Brown stolen by Walt. You got to play Brown for the pass rather than the shot. Smart play by Walt. Gardner looking for his first points. Good defense by Robertson. And Selby brings down the ball for Connecticut. Butler has just got to be patient here. He's being well defended so far in his game. Probably he's got to get a good look and maybe even a putback to get untracked. And there they're back to that 1-2-2 two, two zone now with Gardner on the top. Robertson's going to have a jump shot. Inside, Selby with a soft left-hander, and it's 20-10. to 10. It's UConn leads Arizona. It's about 11.30 in the morning here in the West, and, and maybe the wake-up call hasn't come. Well, two guys definitely asleep there, Anderson and Fry on the inside. That pass should have never taken place. Malik Brown with a steal at the other end. Oh, oh Tony Robertson, an off-balance runner. 
throws that flyer. A little bit different going in a different direction than last year. I'll tell you, he's holding his ear right now. Still feeling the effects of that elbow. And now Connecticut showing the rules on another steal. Butler this time with Robertson. He takes it himself. Can't hit. Rebound goes to Arizona. As a freshman Channing that. Fry hauls it in. And a whistle at the other end as Bynumal is fouled. I think he really surprised uh, oh, Brown on that particular play with a little hesitation dribble. To Lee Brown with his second foul. Obviously, uh, Coach Calhoun with two fouls in the first half will uh, sit down with that player, and that's the case in, with Talik Brown. Yeah, I think he was going to make the move with Gordon anyway, and uh, so it just uh, turned out to be interesting timing. And here's that zone now. 2-3 zone played by Connecticut. Brown, big target inside. Great ball movement. Looking for the open man. Stoudemire fire. Huge. And there, Gardner or Stoudemire had to get on track. Gardner taking a rest now. Very unusual for him to be sitting down. So the two freshmen are in the backcourt for Arizona. Here's Gordon to the seven-footer Brown and the Australian uh, Junior Olympic player from Perth is fouled. Not a good foul by Arizona there because you want to have Brown show that he can make some shots. Bynum's first for Arizona. Justin Brown, Justin Brown at the line. And at the same sports institute in Australia as uh, Luke Longley, who went on to an excellent professional career. I remember when he first came to Connecticut, uh, Dick, and watching him in practice in the red shirt situation. And I said, boy, this guy's really going to develop into, as Jim Calhoun has had over the year, the Travis Knight types, that uh, he's going to be a really outstanding player. But his development has kind of hit the wall and uh, hasn't been what I anticipated. Ball knocked away from uh, Walton by Robertson. Arizona will play it in the offensive end. And they go back to their man-to-man -man now. Brown on Fox. Selby on Channing Fry, giving up uh, quite a few inches. Walton around Butler. What a move. 23 17, Connecticut. Well, you talk about Walton not having explosive speed, but that time he beat Butler, I think, was a little bit shocked by it. Arizona's still in their zone. Robertson and Gordon, two good outside shooters. Shelby's pass threaded through. Gordon. Butler. Well, there's no question he is a terrific finisher. Baseline drive against the zone. It's interesting. Arizona taking away outside shots, but giving up easy things inside, which usually the zone helps. Stottlemyre again from three-point range. Brown can't save. It goes to Stottlemyre. He converts. It's 25-19. For the freshman Stoudemire. Well, Dick, one of the things you never want to do is to save the ball back into the other team's basket, right under the basket. It always works against you. Either let it go out of bounds and get reset or throw it long. Robertson for three. Walton got a piece. Both of these teams are streak scoring clubs. Offensive end. And fires. Oh! 25-22. Well, these freshmen aren't afraid to fire it up there. They really are not. I don't think Rude Olsen can be sure in, in any given game which one's going to produce, although Fry has been pretty consistent, as has been Stoudemire. But Bynum comes in there and gives him a big lift. Walton deflects it and saves it. A blind behind the back throw that carries off Selby. Now, Selby is showing terrific leadership on this Connecticut team, but if he has a weakness, Dick, he has poor hands. That ball was thrown right to him, and he had no chance. Timeout with 7.34 remaining in the first half. Arizona is clawed within three. 
with Arizona trailing by three but on a 12 to three run and it's a sign of the times Billy freshman players come in they play like juniors and seniors. Well it also shows you why statistics are so crazy Arizona out rebounding Connecticut and Arizona knew that was going to be a big problem. They're killing them off the board 17 to 7. What equalizes the game they've got 10 turnovers something that they have been very good at in the past. So here you have a Connecticut a team that out rebounded Maryland by 10 Maryland with a very great front line and here they're being out rebounded by 10 Arizona a great ball handling club normally very conservative turning the ball over but we've got a close and very exciting ball game with Connecticut leading by 12 early taking advantage of turnovers a flying pass by Stoudemire intended for Channing Fry out of bounds after a foul call on Teron Butler is first. Nice offensive set that time by Arizona. Channing Fry should have gotten himself in position underneath the basketball, anticipating the pass. He wasn't quite ready. That comes with experience, I guess. Deflection, a scramble, out of bounds, off Connecticut. A reminder for complete NCAA hoops coverage and exclusive insider information from Dan Wetzel. Go to cbs.sportsline.com or America Online keyword CBS Sportsline. I think I gave Arizona credit for their runs, but Connecticut also a team that likes to have some runs. They had a 34-8 to run against North Carolina. There's Selby and what he can do. Get the good, tough rebound inside. Off a missed shot by Isaiah Fox. Three-point lead, seven minutes before intermission. Here in Tucson, Arizona. They should get their shooters, Robertson and Gordon, away from Walt and get them on the side with the smaller men so that they can shoot over the likes of Bynum and Stoudemire. They've got them on the wrong side of the court. There's Gordon over on the right side of the court. And he'll fire the three over Bynum. Exactly. You want to shoot the ball over the smaller defenders. Eight points now for Gordon to lead UConn off the bench. Walton. There was a case that I didn't think that Okafar should go for that block. But Walton shooting right over Butler. And he now leads Arizona with eight. Feet inside to Okafor. Last touch by the big center. Did you see time. where Walton came all the way across the court on that one. Here he goes. Nice turnaround jumper. And you can see Okafor really trying to go a little bit too far for that block. Put himself out of position. The Casey had missed that shot for the rebound. And Walton with the number four in his chest is 4 4 4 shooting in this first half. The man to man. Okafor kind of playing a one man zone in the middle. A little travel by Byron trying to do too much. 11th turnover by Arizona. It's a long sit down for Gardner over there, Dick. The freshmen have been performing so well that Ruth Olsen letting uh, Jason sit for a while. See that Connecticut and Arizona, two of the five teams to win a national title in the past five years. And fans of both these schools excited about the prospects this year. Fox pulls down the rebound for Arizona. Trailing 28-24 here in the first half. Butler not making very good decisions on what shots to take. Stoudemire hits the three again. And Arizona pulls within one. 11 for Stoudemire. Again, Walt taking Butler off the dribble as he has done a number of occasions today. Stoudemire just holding his ground at the three-point line. 18 to five run by the Wildcats. And that one will quiet the crowd as Ben Gordon shows again his touch. 11 for him. Good job now by Connecticut recognizing where the weak side is of that zone. Staying away from Walton. Ball away by Walton, his first miss of the game. And uh, able to slow down Connecticut and all tied up. Arrow points to UConn. Jim Calhoun real close to getting a technical foul over there. Came out on the court. The good 8-10 feet. Nice piece of officiating realizing this game is tight. You don't want to call it a technical foul if you don't have to. Gardner back in now with Anderson. And also an early look at the Dennis Lattimore, a 6'8 freshman from Halstead. Kansas uh, playing for the first time for Arizona. They set up in the zone. Lute Olsen really happy with those three freshmen that came in and gave a big, big lift to Arizona on this comeback. Inside, Selby. Tough shot. Gardner on the run. Let's see what Jason learned on that sit-down period. Stoudemire. Oh. Rebound out there for Fox. For 
Baltimore. End-to-end action. Gordon not there this time. Selby keeps it alive, and Okafor drops it home. That's one of the things Lou Dawson really worried about before this game. Connecticut getting out quickly on the break, and then their offensive rebound. Gardner still shut out in this game, and Anderson fouled as Selby reaches in. Well, basketball today and tomorrow, win, and it's on to New Orleans in the Super Bowl. The New England Patriots, the Pittsburgh Steelers battle in the AFC Championship game. It all begins with the NFL today, beginning at 12 o'clock Eastern here on CBS. You know, Dick Anderson, as we all know, was a red shirt last year because of the great depth and quality that Lou Olson had in that front court. But in the two previous years, he had actually started about eight games. And uh, so we're not talking about a guy totally inexperienced. Very unusual to see a fellow recruited when he would have been a natural junior. California hairstyle. He's from Long Beach, California. His dad was coached by Lute Olson at Long Beach City College, and now his dad, Gary, is the head coach there. Gives you a pretty good insight as to how to recruit somebody. Recruit their dad initially, huh? That's, that's called foresight, I guess, as Robertson finds an open shot and drills his eighth point of the game. Well, the Connecticut players are realizing stay away from Walton and you'll get some shots off. Here's Walton inside. And up high is Butler to tap it to teammate Justin Brown. Butler really quick off his feet, particularly on that second rebound. Gordon back out to Butler. Robertson for three, and that's his spot. 39-29, UConn. We talked about the flow of these games. Both these clubs can get on runs, primarily because now Jim Calhoun has his two solid shooters in the game at the same time. And finally, Jason Gardner, the leading scorer in the Pac-10, has his first points of the game. Butler at the other end. Terrific job by Butler. Great reverse dribble against somebody as quick as Jason Gardner. Hard to do when you're 6-5. 2.45 left in this first half, and Butler with a steal, and then the reach-in foul against Dennis Lattimore. This overall team quickness that Connecticut presents is really causing a lot of turnovers for Arizona. Timeout, 2.44 left in this opening half. UConn up by 10. University of Arizona, Jack Embry with Billy Packer, a look at the consecutive NCAA tournament appearances by the top teams in the nation. Well, North Carolina having all kinds of problems this year, but Dick, one of the things you can remember, there is a thing called the ACC tournament, and you can earn your way into the NCAA tournament because at the rate they're going right now, it's inconceivable that that streak of 27 would continue based on regular season performance. And that, Billy, would move Arizona to number one. to make it to 18 straight years. 10-point Connecticut lead. Good penetration inside. Gordon did not get outside in time to get his jump shot. Okafor open on in the inside. Gordon doesn't hit him. Does he want a shot over Gordon? Gardner's head. Good defense by Gardner. No whistle. Okafor keeps it alive. And that allows Hazelton to get the shot and then the tip in by Selby. No, Okafor gets credit for the basket. His ninth point. He is so active inside. Such an intelligent player in that lane. Gardner. And uh, hard to hear the whistle of foul before the shot. Reminder coming up, singular at the half. Tim Brando gets you caught up on all of today's college basketball action. Jim Nance will preview tomorrow's AFC Championship game. And then uh, it will go to the Phoenix Open and uh, look there as well. That's all coming up on singular at the half. Dick, for so many years, uh, people considered Texas a non-basketball playing state, particularly on the high school level. But when you take a look at Okafor and a guy like T.J. Ford, Ewing at Duke University, how about the quality of play that's coming out of that state now into the college game and uh, really bodes well, not only for the teams there, but the national recruiters that are now headed to Texas, kind of like in football where Florida has been a, a state that's producing so many outstanding players. Absolutely right. You know, in the old days, uh, California, you know, they produced uh, so many, and then it switched to Florida. Now they continue to uh, offer great athletes for Texas football and basketball in this uh, new century. Ron Butler. Nice job by Fry on him. Got a good shot. Rebound by Fry. Bad shot selection, just like a turnover. Walton saves it. Gardner. 
Way off the mark. Open for a rebound. Robertson got a piece of that and was on the breakout, but they couldn't get him the ball quickly enough. Okafor not uh, comfortable handling the ball, and he flipped it away right to Walton. Stoudemire blocked. Gets it back. Sets up Fry. Oh. Blocked by Okafor. And here comes Selby. To Butler. Oh. Behind the back, and that was not a wise choice. Well, um, uh, two reasons why it was not. Number one, Selby is out. Of, I mean, uh, Butler is out of control. Number two, Selby, as I pointed out, does not have good hands. Now, here he is running full speed. Going to try to catch a behind-the-back pass down low at the ankles. That's a, a mental turnover as well as physical. you got to know as a passer who is going to be the catcher. You know, and if, if the guy doesn't have good hands, hey, it's not like you're trying to be selfish. You just don't throw it over there. He's not going to be able to handle it. It looked as if Butler had an open shot to take it all away himself. Probably could have at least drawn the foul. Ten-point. Deficit staring at Arizona as we approach one minute remaining here in the first half. Oh, nice touch. Gardner had to get it high off the glass in order to elude the block attempt by Okafor. Well, I think Gardner's realizing they're planning to stop the jump shot, so he wisely is putting the ball on the floor. And a man outside with 46 seconds. Butler. Oh. Well, that was terrific double team by Walton. Great pass. Bynum to Walton. The perfect bounce pass. And Dick, just as I pointed out to Selby, know who the catcher is. Walt, who has great hands, on the run, can pick up the ball on the bounce pass like this and still finish. Tony Robertson with his first foul, trying to deny. And Walton with a three point opportunity. Had some trouble with his free throws against Arizona State as the Sun Devils upset Arizona earlier in the week. Robertson right back with a three and rebound Anderson. Well, they can go for the final shot now with 26 seconds. And, and think about that. You've got yourself a six-point lead, and you don't want to go ahead and give that team an opportunity to take that last shot. So not a wise play by Robertson. Now that gives Lute Olsen a chance to set up and try to get a good shot out here. Gardner could be the man with the ball in his hands. Time called with 16 and a half seconds remaining in the opening half. There's never been a... Fill in the Pac-10 proudly with the... Five teams of the top 25. That Big 12 with five as well. And when you take a look at the RPI index, the six power leagues once again shaping up Dick to control the at-large bids of this year's NCAA tournament. I, I look for them somewhere in the neighborhood of 32 or 33 of those picks. Big 12 right now probably as solid as anybody in the country with top teams that are going to be not only in the NCAA tournament, but highly seated as well. So final seconds here of the half. Gardner with eight. Anderson with six. Walton on the inside at pretty good position. Anderson with three. Outside to Fry. That's wow. Not the way it was diagrammed by Lou Dolson, but the big mistake was Robinson taking the jump shot to give up the possession availability. To Connecticut filled up a 12-point lead. Arizona rallied to within one, and then UConn came right back to open a 10-point advantage, and then Arizona, just before the end of the half, took advantage of a couple of miscues by the Huskies and pulled within four. We start at 43-39. And Dick, one of those, Robertsons, as we talked about, they had an opportunity to hold the ball for the last shot. The shot clock not working. So with their ability to hit the threes, that was one three they shouldn't have taken. As Arizona took advantage of it and got back in the game. Arizona starts the second half with possession. Strong, tough man-to-man -man cry inside. Gets open for for the first time. Out of position defensively. Really backed him down in low. Six points for Fry. And Arizona starts in a tough man-to-man. Walton today doing a nice job on Butler. He has not been able to get away from Walton yet. Here they are matched up back outside to Selby. And you'll give Connecticut that shot. Okafer with a rebound and the shot. And it's batted to Gardner. He saves to Walton. Long pass to Fry. Push off. Oh! And ties it up at 41. Fry here has made, in the last five games, he's made 22 of 26 shots. He had won 17 in a row until it was snapped at Arizona State. Wednesday night. And starts off quickly. This is three for three now, considering that two-pointer he had right at the end of the half. So uh, a terrific job by the freshman. Child 
it down to eight. Crowd really into it. Robertson hawked by Gardner. Okafer outside his range, but the rebound goes to Butler, and Fry climbs up for the rebound. As the clock was winding down, you want to get the ball away from Stoudemire, who's the best on-ball defender. Fry can't hit the follow on Gardner's miss. Might have been up a little bit too high. Talit Brown takes it the other way over Walton, and the foul is on Luke Walton. His second. Named after Maurice Lucas, who was uh, Bill Walton's teammate with the Portland Trail Blazers, and the uh, Big Luke often calls uh, Luke Walton after a game, offers advice, encouragement. Bruce Lucas, who was uh, one of the great ones for our buddy Al McGuire. At Marquette before going to the NBA. And out of Pittsburgh, who Al probably never saw play in high school. <laughs> <laughs> but he knew he was a star. <laughs> Sotomayor uh, hurt that leg a little bit in the defensive sequence. And here's a guy that has really improved his free throw shooting. Dick last year, right down, harboring on 50% all year as a free throw shooter. Doing a lot better now, up in the 65% range. To Lake Brown. And he now has seven points in the game, and UConn back in front by two. Bynum, who's uh, in the ball game, had a real strong first half off that bench. Butler and Walt matched up at the other end. Gardner. Tries to get inside around Brown and the call against Talik Brown. That'll be his third. I'm really liking what players are doing in this game today, thinking their way through the game. There's Gardner realizing they're trying to take away his jump shot, now putting the ball on the floor and penetrating. Why? Tough shot. Selby touched at last out of bounds for Arizona, and Talik Brown will indeed be taken out. Here comes Ben Gordon back in. Gordon, who had 11 points to share the scoring lead with his teammate Tony Robertson in the first half. Makes Connecticut much more explosive when Gordon and Robertson are out there shooting those jump shots. Fry, that receptor. Butler. Selby. Boy, for a big man showing the such a good speed getting down court. What Selby can do in 8, 10 feet from the basket, that is where he's effective offensively. Four points for Selby. Four-point lead, Connecticut, and Butler knocks it away from Walton out of bounds. We talked about before, Selby can put it on the floor, a very good finisher in there, and his game is 8 to 10 feet from the basket. Good leadership, and as you pointed out at the top of the show, the only starting senior that we see on the floor. Both of these teams rebuilding with youth and very effectively as Calhoun and Olsen doing such a great job recruiting. Missed by Bynum, and here comes UConn. Robertson ahead to Gordon. Another real good thinking move that time by Okafor, not trying to chop down on the steal. Selby, jump hook, and out of bounds to Arizona. There's Jim Calhoun saying to Selby, just calm down, make the good and easy pass. Selby's almost the kind of guy that you'd want to get garbage points instead of trying to create for himself. Will Bynum, the six-foot freshman from Chicago Crane Tech, now running the show with Gardner in the backcourt for Arizona. Both teams sticking with man-to-man -man here in the second half. Good back to a pass, but the block by Okafor, his fifth. Anderson knocked away again by Okafor. I'd give him his uh, fifth and sixth. Anderson from behind with the push. That'll send Gordon to the line. To the all-time shot blocker, Danielle Marshall of Connecticut. He's their career leader with 245, their season leader with 110 and the game leader with 10, which he had against Hartford. You have to be, feel that before Okafor is out of Connecticut, uh, that he is going to be a guy that could erase those marks. Got 60 already this season. One of the top shot blockers in the country is uh, Isaiah Fox comes in for Ricky Anderson as Bill Olson makes a move in the front court. And we look at Ben Gordon. Boy, we talked about Mount Vernon High School, Scooter and Rodney McRae, Gus Williams. How about Earl Tatum, Ray Williams? He knew them all, Gordon. He knew the legacy. Yes, he did. And the legacy it is, uh, of course, uh, some of those fellas being part of national championship teams with Earl and, and of course, the uh, McRae brothers. Oh, what a sweet stroke on that three. He has nine. 
Gardner, as I said, Gardner, a great streak shooter from the outside. Thought he heard a whistle there. And Gardner reaching in, picks up the foul. His first. That was not a good play by Jason because Selby's uh, 20 feet from the basket. Probably not going to make a play from out there. No need to double team him. Robertson triggers it in. UConn one for six after the break. Robertson changes that with a sweet jumper. And I'll tell you, when you put Robertson and Gordon out there in the backcourt for Connecticut, they have two outstanding scores, great pure shooters, makes them very difficult to defend, and they should allow Butler to get some shots off. Gardner hawked by Gordon. Inside to Fry, and a foul. Can be Selby on his back. And Selby, <laughs> Selby saying, hey, wait a minute, he's pushing against me. Second on Selby. And I'm only interested in the top six teams from those conferences because if you're in the top 40, more than likely you're going to take about 30 to 35 of those at-large picks. Right now, the Big 12 looks like they've got six teams that fall in that category. And right now, the Big 12 teams look to me like they're going to be the highest-seeded teams in the NCAA tournament, at least as we enter February. How about Arizona in the Pac-10? Six I, from out here? I, I think that they're looking at six as well. ACC strong, Big East and Big Ten down in the bottom of those six power conferences. Walton giving it up to Isaiah Fox, and the freshman trying to maneuver into the lane around Okafer and picks up the foul. With the Anselmi, I believe, his third. Now, when you start talking about RPI of individual teams, that schedule is so important. You can see Arizona up there, too. Georgia, a team probably surprising as much as anybody. Jim Herrick doing a great job down there with some good wins already in that league. Looked like a solid contender for the SEC championship. Walton able to hit the short jumper. Battles to get it back. Feeds to Fox. Boy, all kinds of contact and no foul. And finally, the whistle sounds as Isaiah Fox goes down. It looks like he hurt either his shoulder or elbow. Boy, he really hit that ground hard. They've uh, let these players uh, operate without too many whistles today. Foul goes on Mike Hayes, who just came in uh, for Johnny Selby. Well, earlier in the year, Fox was the guy in the middle getting most of the playing time. Channing Fry has uh, taken over lately. You'll see he really hit the floor hard. Father, a former football player here. He was born on the day that Lute Olson took the job at Arizona. <laughs> Pretty good karma. Fox is from Santa Monica, California. Went to Crossroads uh, High School there, yeah. averaging five and a half a game. Now, you may be able to get a sub. This is going to be interesting. The number one free throw shooter in the country comes in to take Fox's spot because Fox is not able to shoot. Now, we go from a guy shooting almost 100% coming in to shoot for a guy that was shooting 56%. Now here's Stoudemire, what a story he is as you look at Fox. He has taken 50 free throws this year, missed only one, currently on a 39 game, a 39 consecutive uh, make streak. The 97 oh. pan How do you do? Well, you know, maybe part of not being in the game, Dick, you know, I mean, you bring a guy off the bench cold. Now, one of the things, though, in Stoudemire's favor, he says, I never practiced free throw shooting, so I just walk out there. He said it's an open shot. What's the big deal? You, the fans give him a standing ovation here, even on the miss. And Oh, uh, somebody count. in the lane. He gets a miss, gets credited for two misses coming off the bench. And when you start talking about leading the nation, we have two freshmen leading in categories. T.J. Ford and assist Stoudemire up to those two misses, leading the nation in foul shooting. Now the streak ends at 39. The Pac-10 record will stay in the uh, hands of the Stanford player, Ryan Mendez, who made 49 last year. And Fox saying, hey, I could have made uh, two, uh, at least one of those shots. I can miss two. Yeah, I do that. Oh, no, amazing, isn't it? Inside the Butler, and that's his power move, and it's 53-46 Connecticut. Six well, now for Butler. You can see, but having the two good shooters on the outside, you have to go ahead and pressure them. Leaves Butler open. And Gardner open for three. 53-49. Great squared up look for Jason Gardner. Gardner, who started cold, didn't score in the first 10 minutes, now leads Arizona with 12. Put on a great show here against Kansas with eight threes, set a new school record. And he got those kind of looks. 
to Lee Brown maneuvering with Bynum. Good defense. Okafor a bit out of his range on that 12-footer. Gets it back. That's his oh, shot. Oh, boy. Mecca Okafor with 11. And there comes that rebounding advantage that uh, Arizona early in the game was holding their own. And now Connecticut just pounding them. Bynum firing from outside. And the freshman has his first three-point goal. Bynum 16 against Florida, 15 against Oregon, 17 against Southern Cal. So very capable scoring against the good teams. Bradley will call against Butler as contact made with Gardner. And Arizona with the ball six minutes into the second half and back to a three-point game. One of the things that changes drastically for your defensive tendency with Brown in the ball game, instead of Gordon or Robertson back there, teams will slough off and fall off of him because he's not going to make the jump shot, making it tougher for Butler to get inside shots. Arizona very small now with three guards, Stoudemire, Gardner, and Bynum. Walton and Fry inside, and it's Walton, the turnaround, hits the side of the board. Fry with a left hand. Over Okafor. Ten points for Fry. Connecticut by one. Well, Fry is really putting up some big numbers, coming on so strong for this Arizona team. Talik Brown with a drive and a touch shot and a foul. And that was Jason Gardner on the reach. Now, if Gardner is the guy that committed that foul, that was awful early to count that as a continuation basket. Second foul on Jason Gardner. Now, watch when the foul is called. Is this in the act of shooting? There's the foul. Well, I have to question that one. I, it was either, a, if it's Gardner's foul, it was before the shot started. Sends to Lake Brown, the 6-1 sophomore from Queens, St. John's Prep. And he converts the three-point play, and UConn back up by four. Kind of get the feeling the team with the last possession is going to win this game, Dick. It's kind of like the game last year. Bynum can't hit the three, and Okafor climbs high for the rebound. Nice two-handed rebound with an excellent block out against Fry. Okafor averaging over nine boards a game, one of the leaders in the nation. I'm really kind of surprised that Arizona doesn't go back to the zone any time that Connecticut does not have their two shooting guards on the floor. It's Fry with a block, and then Okafor there to pick up the loose change. Can't fault Fry in that. That was his man, but he was doing more than his duty. Nobody helped him out. The Huskies by six. Gardner inside, blocked by Okafor out of bounds. He is a presence inside, and 6'9 playing as if he were 7'2. Well, it's a waste of time to drive in there knowing that he's the weak side defender. He is going to make the block, so if you drive in there, you know he's coming over. Look for a pass, not a shot. Justin Brown back in. Officially, that was his fifth block. We had him for a couple oh, more. I, uh, I'd have to go back and review the tape on this. I think he's closer to eight than five. I do too. Ooh, Talik Brown picks up his fourth foul. So the point guard, starting guard for Jim Calhoun, uh, saddled with four, and immediately Ben Gordon will come in for him. I think that in a way, though, at this time in the game, that helps Connecticut. It gets the two shooters on the floor, which they need right now, it allows you to bring Brown back in at the end of the game where he can be in ball handling responsibility. Gardner picking his spot and a foul on the rebound. Butler pushing off. A reminder, Friday on CBS, the Supreme Court will battle over a controversial issue and one judge's decision could cost him his life. Don't miss TV's newest hit series. All new first Monday, Friday here on CBS, America's most watched network. Takes it inside, and Justin Brown with a block, but hit him with a body. And there's the difference, Dick, with Okafor's great ability to block shots. He doesn't hit with the body. He stays on the ground, goes straight up, never tries to bat the ball away. A very intelligent young shot blocker. They're going to call it on the backside on Scott Hazelton, his first. Okafor is rested periodically by Calhoun. He really has him, leaves him in there three, four solid minutes, gives him a couple minute blow, brings him back in. Also helps to keep him out of foul trouble because he'd love to have him down the stretch. Counts on Brown to come in to give those quality minutes. Johnny Selby returns for Hazelton as Luke Walton hits his 11th point of the game. 
No, before averages 27 minutes a game. But so when you really get it, I mean, he's up there around 30, but real nice job of spacing those minutes, as you pointed out by Jim Calhoun. Gordon, one freshman working against Bynum, another. And a foul. This is a much more difficult team to defend against with those two scoring guards are on the floor for Connecticut. Bynum's second foul. Team fouls now, a six against Arizona and uh, seven against Connecticut. Gordon, not as tall as Ray Allen, but he has that same kind of physical presence. Very strong in there. Bynum with a steal, Gardner with a drive. And he's fouled. Gordon got him. Quickness for the young man from Indianapolis, Indiana, where he was Mr. Indiana basketball in high school. Here you see him take it, fearless competitor, and really wanted that one back. His mother, an Indiana University graduate, and uh, Hoosiers have long uh, been uh, disappointed. There she is cheering for a son here in Arizona. They thought uh, he might migrate to Bloomington. Mother Stephanie. Gardner, of course, the story, uh, along with uh, three of his teammates who left school early off that final uh, team for Arizona last year to go professional, and uh, he did not sign with the nation. Had some second thoughts. Did not have a great summer camp. Returned to campus, and uh, hoping now he might stay not only this year but next. Says he enjoys playing with this young group of players as much as he did those good friends that left him. 60 to 58. UConn by two. Brown with a spin move. Fans wanted a turnover, and he did travel. I think he either traveled or stepped out of bounds on the end line. Okafor did a good job against BC the other night. Maryland, a basketball team playing extremely well. Bobby Huggins Club, as usual, he's got a great program at Cincinnati. Florida, a team that has been beaten by this uh, Arizona club. Having a rough one today at Arkansas. Oklahoma, Texas Tech. Boy, Texas Tech takes on two tough opponents uh, two weekends in a row. Kentucky at Alabama, or with Alabama, another tough game in the SEC. And Arizona rallying throughout this game as Connecticut has left, led for the most part, but it's down to a two-point advantage for the Huskies, and Arizona with the ball. Bynum, freshman backcourt, takes it inside, can't hit. And there's Okafor quickly back into the game and pulls in a rebound. Ron Butler, the leading scorer for UConn, connects, and the Huskies here at the University of Arizona lead by four. It's 62-58 with 11 minutes to go. Bynum being guarded by Butler here. Butler giving up a, a lot of quickness on this particular play, but Bynum has got to be a little bit more patient. Gardner back out to five. Nice. He shows as a big man. He's got a good 15-footer. Well, Okafor was kind of surprised that he took that shot without the dribble. And a nice head fake and look by Fry. 12 points for Fry. Butler's got a smaller man on him. Stoudemire ought to take him inside and post him up. Gordon for the 10-footer. And Gordon, one of the many freshmen that are showing terrific skill here today. He has 17 to lead all scores. Two good baskets in a row by Gordon. And Stoudemire has trouble handling it, but it'll stay in Arizona's possession with 10 minutes, 19 seconds left in this second half. They played to a two-point game on a controversial call at UConn last year, won by the Huskies, and it has all the indications here today of the second half coming down to the wire. Rick Anderson back for Arizona. That was a game that Lute Olsen uh, did not attend. Jim Rosbar, uh, Rosborough uh, coached that game. Remember at halftime, Lute Olsen was going to give information, but his telephone wouldn't work, so they couldn't even get communication in that regard. Fry out battles Okafor for the rebound and draws the foul from the big freshman for UConn. Uh, Okafor with his second. Let me throw some numbers out on kind of games that Fry has had. 19 points, 8 rebounds against UCLA. 18-10 rebounds against Pepperdine. 18-16 rebounds against Oregon State. Young man has been outstanding. One of the top freshmen in the country. And here are some others. Stoudemire and uh, Fry here in the pack 
10. Childress with a big game in that huge win for Stanford over UCLA. 64-61 UConn. They present their own freshman and here's one of them, Ben Gordon with 17 to lead all scores today. Same number of points he had against North Carolina. Butler, the leading scorer for UConn with the ball now, is only a sophomore over Walton. And Karan Butler with eight. It's been a quiet afternoon, morning and afternoon here. This game starting at 11 a.m. in the West. Walton maneuvers inside and draws the foul. Butler raises his hand quickly. He wants to fall on in and not on over four. But see, what Butler did right there, nice piece of teamwork and good thinking on Butler's part. He doesn't want the big shot blocker to get any further foul trouble, so he raised his hand quickly, but the officials didn't go for it. Okafer with his third, sending Walton to the line. <laughs> Butler now trying to work the officials as well, saying, hey, he's putting his shoulder into me, and he's right about that, but Walton does it very effectively. Walton, uh, one of the nice compliments to his all-around talent is he's a box score filler. He puts numbers in every column. Well, his, his uh, triple-double was the 15th in Pac-10 history, and probably the greatest one of all was Damon Stoudemire, who had 32 points, 12 rebounds, and 14 assists in that sensational triple-double that he had. He's the cousin of... Salim Stoudemire plays as a freshman now, and Selby inside battles it up for the rebound for the easy two. 68-62, UConn. Is Gordon showing us a little bit here down in this stretch as well? Gardner from outside. He gets shot. it back. Gordon was breaking down court for the possible break. Yeah, but against a guy like, oh boy, Gardner putting right on the floor. And Walton drives for the basket. Right. And Walton with 15. Showing some real competitiveness out here is Gardner. He put Gordon right on his back. 68-64, Connecticut leading Arizona with 8.45 left in this second half. Robertson spins and offensive foul. Robertson on a push-off on that spin dribble. As I said, Stoudemire is the best on-ball defender that Arizona has, according to the coaching staff. Robertson second foul. Arizona will play it from the other end. That's 10 fouls now on UConn, so the double bonus working for Arizona from now on, and Arizona's committed only five fouls in the second half. And there's the steal by Selvey. Gardner to beat. And Selvey scores, and Anderson, uh, no foul on him. And Calhoun comes out to make sure that uh, his player's all right, and wondering why no foul. Well, Calhoun, being the KG veteran coach that he is, wants to make it look even worse than it was by showing the referee, hey, why do you think my man's laying there under the stanchion? So there's no technical, obviously, because you're coming out for a potential injured player. And you can see that, uh, you know, it was, it was a lot of contact, but somewhat inadvertent. But that's a little smart coaching move by Jim Calhoun to get some sympathy from these officials. He's got next to him three guys in a row That's on his up. coaching staff, all of which have been head coaches. George Blaney's standing there, Dave Laetto, uh, trying Moore. to get him, yeah, Tom Moore, all trying to get Jim calmed down. But I don't think that's ever happened in the history of college basketball before, where his staff is made up of four men, all head coaches. Here we'll see it. After the play, you could say Anderson did make body yes. contact, but maybe a good no call as well. This game is really getting physical. Gardner takes it inside and then back out to Stoudemire for three. Two! Oh, he's a cool playing freshman, isn't he? I like what Gardner is doing from a leadership standpoint right now as well. Eight minutes to go, 14 for Stoudemire. Gordon, the freshman for UConn, unable to answer with a three. Walton with a release to Gardner. What a pass by Walton, leading the Pac-10 and assists this year. A 6 8 forward. It's a great timeout by Jim Calhoun because what's happened, Gordon is taking a challenge from Gardner as a personal challenge instead of thinking about the. Here we see a personal challenge. I talked about Gordon now. He's wanting to take on Gardner one on one. Watch what happens. He shoots the ball. Instead of getting back on defense, he allows Gardner to break three. He is not thinking through the game right now. Look at him looking at his shot, does not realize where his man is. 
That allows Arizona to get the breakout, and what Gordon has to learn, and this will only take experience, that you can't take on one-on-one -on -one personal challenges in a game of five-man basketball. It never works out for you. That was only the first three-point attempt by UConn in the second half, and they uh, did so well in the first half. A scramble and a foul after there was a block by Arizona, no foul, and the Wildcats will go to the other end after the foul whistled against Johnny Selby, his fourth. So two Husky starters, Talik Brown and Johnny Selby with four. Now Jim Calhoun really starting to work these officials right now. Remember that call that was not made on Selby driving to the basket. Now we see a little activity, and this game is really getting rough. Calhoun wanting to get some callbacks from these officials, and he's really going to start working them now. Here's Walton averaging 14 again and has 16 today. One thing I mentioned about those 15 triple doubles in Pac-10 history, Arizona has six of them. You have Walton with his, Lauren Woods had two, Damon Stoudemire had one, Chris Mills had one, and Muehlbach had one, the first one for this club. And a lane violation by Arizona, so timeout was 7.31 left in this second half. Arizona 70, Connecticut 70. Back at McHale Center on the campus of University of Arizona, 45% shooting by Arizona. Interestingly, in their 13-3 season, UConn has not allowed any team to shoot better than 45%. Dick, in this game, as I said, topsy-turvy in regard to stats. Here you have Arizona out-rebounding Connecticut. Arizona ninth in the Pac-10 in rebounding, but from a standpoint of assist turnover ratio, Arizona 15 they're in a situation where they have 15 turnovers and, and Connecticut only has 10. So ball handling has not been exactly what we expected and certainly not rebound. Talik Brown returns for Connecticut playing with four fouls. He and Selby both with four. Gordon and Okafer with three and no one for Arizona with more than two. Doesn't uh, make things very pleasant for Calhoun as the steal. Gardner ahead to Anderson. Brown to beat. And Anderson able to dribble it in. First time that Arizona has led since the opening minutes at 4-2. to two. Boy, and a beautiful decision by Fry not to touch that ball that was up on the rim. Ooh, bad shot, but he makes it anyway. Talik Brown, who made that three-pointer to start this game, hits another one. I didn't think that's the kind of shot Jim Calhoun would want from a guy who's not that proficient on the, on the perimeter. Connecticut reclaiming the lead by one. Walton to Gardner, three from the corner. Oh, what a tough shot. Money player. How about that? You had before Talik Brown put his finger up on his mouth saying silence the crowd. Gardner responded by saying the same thing. This game is getting personal. I think they remember last year's ball game. Gardner, who had trouble scoring in the first half, has 19 now to lead all scorers. And Haran Butler, the top scorer for UConn, answers. He has 10, and it's tied at 75. What did I say earlier, Dick? The last man standing is going to win this one. This is getting rough, physical. Two teams really going after each other. Six minutes to go, and Robertson makes the defensive play, knocks it away, out of bounds to Connecticut. A reminder, the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, after uh, today's game, will select the most valuable player for each team, and Chevrolet makes a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund. It's a grand tradition for over a quarter century. Anderson out, Bynum in so uh, Lute Olsen goes small now with Stoudemire, Gardner, and Bynum a three guard offense. <laughs> Gotta give Karan Butler the ball inside, and there it is. And the tip by Okafor, who continues to be a shining light for these Huskies. See, there's a big mismatch. Stoudemire is trying to guard Butler, and he can't handle him. Gardner loves these challenges. He feels it. Another three for the All American just. And Gardner, Jason Gardner, he has 22. Right now, if, if I'm Connecticut, I get Butler the ball down and low as much as possible. There's no way Stoudemire can handle him in there. Talib working on the freshman Bynum, gets it inside, and Mike Hayes unable to connect. Out of bounds to Connecticut. Tim Calhoun, the new grandfather, is daughter-in-law at 1 o'clock this morning in Hartford Hospital, presenting him with, with a granddaughter. He now has three uh, granddaughters. 
There is Butler, but that time he had to shoot it over Walton. Gardner with Gorder. Gordon back. Gardner flying down the court. Is no basket. No gonna, basket. We're going to call that foul earlier. I tell you, Gardner right now has fire and brimstone in his eyes. He is a tough competitor, and he wants this ball. Foul before the shot on Ben Gordon, his fourth. So now three Huskies saddled with four. Arizona leading by one. Gardner at the line, looking for his 23rd point. Well, it may at the end of the season be a All-America backcourt of a couple of Jasons, Williams at Duke, and Gardner here from Arizona. Well, as freshman, Gardner probably had the upper hand on Jason. Maybe Jason had it on him last year. And two guys that love the ball in their hands in big moments. That's the biggest lead for Arizona in the entire game. Three. Under five to go. Well, I can't believe Brown is not thinking for Ron Butler here. And the foul will be for the block on Will Bynum. And you've got Butler, one of the toughest guys to handle in the low post, even if you've got a man his size on him. And here you have Stoudemire, six foot one, giving up about five or six inches and a lot of strength. If you're Connecticut, you've got to test Butler down in low. Stoudemire fronting him defensively. Robertson almost dragging that back foot. Good pressure by Gardner. Okafor's in the way, he, and that's why Butler can't get the ball. Good defense by Arizona. They're on their feet here in the Wildcat country. Seven on the shot clock. Brown gets a kind bounce. It's 80 to 79, Arizona. Well, I love the competitive nature of these two teams right here. Now Gardner's turn. Brown on him. A lot to say about the programs, Dick, and the coaches right here. These te teams are used to winning games. There's Luke Walton at his best, finding the open man with a perfect pass. Fry doing a much better job offensively being in position than Okafor is. Fry now with 15. Okafor with a good pick. Brown with a drive. It's the link Brown and Jason Gardner going head to head. Anything you can do, I can do. And they're talking to each other. They're staring each other down. Heavyweight battle between the two smallest guys on the court. A holding foul before the shot by Luke Walton. And you know what you'd have to say now, in fairness to uh, what happened in that first half, remember how much Gardner sat down. So he's got a lot of energy here. He's the 40-minute player when uh, Lute Olson needs it. There's your foul situation with three Huskies in immediate danger of disqualification and Bynum with the only cap with three. And Walton steps to the line. He still hears from his uh, former roommate, best friend, Richard Jefferson, one of the underclassmen who uh, left the Arizona program after they made it to the final four and the final two a year ago. For Jefferson, and watching this game, and will have his critique for his buddy Bolton as Hayes goes out. Selby returns, and Walton 17 points, five rebounds, and seven assists for the bonus. Well, what we see Jim Calhoun doing is now matching up with Lute Olson. He's put his three guards into the lineup. And there was a situation where Connecticut could not take advantage of the mismatch to Ron Butler being guarded by a smaller man because they really don't have men in their front line, Selvi and Okafar, who can make that pass inside, a la Walton, who does it so well for Arizona. Three-point game, 84-81 Arizona, three and a half to go. A little half-court trapping now by Arizona. To Lee Brown. Good switch by Walton. And tied up by Bynum. The arrow to Connecticut. Let's take a look at the CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Rebounds. Arizona that's had trouble uh, on the boards all season long with a plus six over UConn. For complete game stats, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Obviously, another big stat. Arizona 15 for 19 from the foul line. 
Connecticut only seven for eight. And remember, two of those that were missed were missed by the nation's number one free throw shooter. One on a lane violation. Yep. Three minutes to go. Little 1-4 set here. Gordon around Gardner. Great pass to Okafor. Okafor working on a possible triple-double. He's already double figures in scoring and rebounds, and he has seven blocks. Officially, our record has him already at nine. Arizona's lead is one at the 240 mark. Walton and Butler matched up. The give to Fry. A shot over Okafor. Channing Fry with 17. At the other end, Brown with a miss, and Fry the rebound. Now, Talik Brown has to understand Okafor was knocked down under the basket, yet he had basically just gotten to the top of the key. You don't want to take shots in a game this tight where you don't have your number one rebounder in position. Well, these Wildcat fans, a sellout of over 14,000. They haven't been in their seats for five minutes, standing, watching this action. Gardner pulls up. Oh, my. Absolutely brilliant shot. Gardner has time to run by and hit an assistant coach on the hands for a hand slap. 26 for Jason Gardner to lead all scores. Timeout, Connecticut. They love it in Tucson. Now let's take a look at our next Dell tournament favorites. 1997, the Arizona Wildcats defeated number three number one seeds in their national championship run. Kansas in the semis regionals. They knocked off North Carolina in the semis and capped their dismissing of number one seeds by defeating Kentucky in the national championship game. Lute Olson and the Arizona Wildcats won their first national title and did it by beating the nation's best. Well, Miles Simon would be saying today, Simon says, this is a fine basketball game. And you know, Dick, not only two teams that we know are fighting for national recognition, seeding in the NCAA tournament, but they bring their conferences with them in a situation like this. We're talking about the RPI, these crossover games that the coaches like Lute Olsen and Jim Calhoun, not afraid to put their team on the line, even this late in the season, for great intersectional play. Really a healthy situation. And for uh, UConn and Calhoun, a tough trip all the way from uh, Hartford out here on Thursday night. Landed about 11 o'clock. Practiced yesterday and uh, started a game at uh, 11 o'clock in the morning today. Well, he had his team at practice yesterday at 10.15 just to get them ready for that type of uh, time change. Arizona with a five-point lead, its largest of the game. Gordon for three, and Ben Gordon. Dick Amber, Billy Packer, Tucson, Arizona, McHale Center, Connecticut, and Arizona going end to end. A fast tempo game. Arizona trailing throughout most of this game has rallied here in the final 10 minutes, enjoys a two point lead. They have the ball as we're down to 115 to go here in the second half. Both teams employing three guard offenses right now, so they're excellent matchups. Solid screen. Luke Walton inside and open for with his eighth block of the game. Robertson the other way, looking for a tying basket and a foul against Stoudemire of Arizona. Walton actually, Dick, was anticipating, and this is where you give Okafor so much credit, was anticipating that Okafor would give him room to make a pass. Great defense by Connecticut. Okafor has been the best shot blocker I've seen in college basketball in quite some time. Just a freshman makes great decisions and doesn't commit to going off the floor till he's ready. Tony Robertson, two free throws to tie it up. It's 88-87 as Robertson, the second leading scorer for UConn on the season. Now he made 22 straight free throws earlier this year. And misses the second, Okafor with a rebound and the score. And the freshman from Houston continues to be brilliant today. Four blockout technique by Arizona. Went right over the top of Fry. Final minute. Connecticut by one. The Huskies won by two in the final seconds last year. It stores. Gardner for three. Oh! 91-89. Gardner with 29 points. Fearless on the three-point attempts. I don't know if I've seen a play in a long time take on a challenge like this. Jason Williams did it against Maryland. Gardner doing it here. 
so that Jason's rising to the top. He didn't score the first 10 minutes of the game. Now has 29. Arizona by two. A barrage of three-pointers off the fingertips of Jason Gardner and Arizona leads by two with 31.9 seconds left. Now what? Dick, what I think I would do if I was Lute Olsen, I would go back. Remember they started the game in the 1-2-2 two, two zone, right. and they had a Lute ball sitting, sitting up on the top in the point situation. I'd go back to that zone now because I think both teams have adjusted very well to the aggressive man-to-man. -man. Let's see if Arizona goes back. Even though they've got the small team out there, I'm surprised that, that Luke hasn't gone back and said, let's go with the bigger team. You got a chance to get a timeout and go with the zone, bringing Anderson in the game. He doesn't do that. He stays with the man-to-man -to, -man to have these matchups against the guards. I think it'd been wise to change defenses. Connecticut with 30 seconds to go, trailing by a basket, 91-89. Ben Gordon, the freshman, he's got the three-point range. The number one scorer is Butler. He works it inside and ties it up. Karan Butler, it's 91 all. 12 points for him, well under his average of nearly 20. This Arizona call time. Yep. With 11.6 seconds left, Lute Olsen will set up a play for the final shot. <laughs> what a battle in the desert. UConn and Arizona tied at 91. Welcome back and a reminder tonight on CBS a night of all new drama touched by an angel that's life the district all tonight on CBS America's most watched network 91 all with 11.6 seconds to go one timeout remaining for UConn and the team fouls and slight advantage there because they double bonus working for Arizona and the arrow as well for the Cats. What did they set up here, do you think? Well, they're bringing Anderson into the ball game right now. Fry sitting down, so going with a little bit more experience. Anderson sets good, solid screens. Remember, he made the last six back points against Florida in that upset win in New York. A little bit more experience on the floor than does Fry have. Having a hard time getting into bounds. And Walden had to use a timeout. Good pressure defense by Jim Calhoun's Huskies. Olsen will have to regroup. 11.6 seconds left in regulation. CBS Super Friday kicks off with the funniest and wildest Super Bowl's greatest commercials. Walk online keyword CBS Sports Line. Dick, the two guards, two smallest guys, are all the way down under the offensive basket. Let's see if Anderson gets a solid screen. It's going to be Gardner. Hey, fella, can you stop me on penetration? Looking for Walton. Gardner, five seconds, four. Yeah. Three, Gardner, two, blocked by Okafor, another one. They have him officially with nine. We have him with 12, which would give this young freshman a triple double. Now we have one second, so there is chance to catch and shoot. The pass goes Run away. Right. We go to overtime. Well, no one's touched no, it yet. It, it's Connecticut, Connecticut should have a chance to go ahead and make an offensive play. I didn't think anyone touched the ball. There should be a full second remaining. Well, there should be. I don't think there should have been any time. There was one second left in the clock. Now there's three tenths. Jim Calhoun's going to say, I want that back. The... Now, wait a second. Let's see where they say that this ball is going to be taken out of bounds. I don't think it touched anybody. If it touched the player, thing. then the uh, UConn gets it in midcourt where the ball went out of bounds. Well, then time would have gone off there, right. Dick. So they can't have it both ways. If the ball is out at the end line, that means that nobody touched. See what they're calling here. Well, they put the one second back on the clock. So it did not touch a player, so the ball comes back to the baseline at uh, Arizona's end, and a chance for the long throw and a uh, throw to quick catch. Throw to Okafar, you gotta go long, longer. And it's deflected by Bynum, and uh, we are going to overtime here in Arizona. Night to the defensive possession where Arizona, I thought, could have gone to a different type of defense instead of staying with that situation with three small men on the floor, allowing Gron Butler to go ahead and get a shot inside. Now, a reminder that Connecticut, as we start this overtime period, three men on the court, Selby, Brown, and Gordon, all with four fouls. No one in trouble for Arizona. Bride jumps it with Selby. 
And Walton tips to Sotomayor. Sotomayor and Gardner in the backcourt. Walton and Bynum, a three-guard offense again for Arizona. With Fry and Walton, the only big men on the court for Lute Olson. And Walton takes it in, flips it back around the corner. Sotomayor open for three. Great cross-court pass by Bynum. Really recognized where his fellow freshman was. 17 for Stoudemire. Familiar name, Arizona basketball history. Damon, his cousin, of course, was a great star here. And again, Connecticut having all kinds of problems getting the ball to Butler, who's being guarded by a man that he's got by six inches. Because Okafor and Selby are not good entrance passers. Selby takes it inside, and the left-hander can't hit. Okafor's tip, and Walton hauls it in for Arizona. And With can lead the break. Bynum into the lane, back outside. Oh, Gardner passed up the three. Good decisions by Arizona. Stottlemyre, two for two from long range here in the overtime. And Arizona has its biggest lead, 97-91. Great decisions by the Arizona players not to take bad shots to get a better one. And relying on the 19-year-old freshman from Lake Oswego, Oregon, Celine Stoudemire. Tremendous cross-court pass to Stoudemire was set up. There's Fry setting a nice screen to guarantee it. And then the terrific decision-making by the Arizona, actually, freshmen making those decisions, Fry and Bynum, to get the ball to their teammate, another freshman who bangs home two threes. Well, with all the losses from last year's team and three underclassmen to the professional ranks, uh, Lute Olson scrambling, and always oh, a magnificent recruiter, five of the nine. They only have nine scholarship players here at Arizona. Five of them are freshmen, but they're certainly playing like upperclassmen. And for uh, Stoudemire, huh? Malik Brown needs to get that ball in his hands, and they have got to figure out a way to get Butler a number of good touches before somebody else takes a shot. Down by six, Gordon patiently brings it in. Tried a little pick and roll with uh, Butler, didn't work. Walton picked it up. You see, every time Walton's forcing Butler to move outside, but this is a good move to get Butler the ball. Open for tipping it back, trying to save, and he saves it himself. Ooh, good reaction by Gardner. Ben Gordon, oh, another boy. freshman. Oh, boy, oh, have we seen some terrific play from you kids here on campus the first season? Okafor Gordon at Connecticut. Fry. I talked about Gordon's strength. That he made that shot without having to gather himself with no dribble. Went right up over the top of Gardner. 23 for Gordon. That ties his high for this freshman year. Okafor with 19. That is his high. 2.45 to go. Eight on the shot clock as Walton has it stripped away by Karan Butler. Three on two. What a pass. Beautiful. Nice job on Connecticut. Get right back in this thing. The crowd converts on a picture-perfect bounce pass from Karan Butler. Even the players smiling. They're enjoying it. And crowd. so are the two coaches up almost in exactly the same position on the floor. Saying this is why we're in this profession. 97-96 Arizona, 2.15 to go in overtime. Want a little screen and roll. Back out to Gardner, out of three-point range, so he takes it inside. And a call against Gardner, I believe, for pushing off. Lute Olsen can't believe. Big, big call. There was a beautiful pass that time by Butler, right off the dribble. And Brown with a good hard drive to the basket, as we have seen Jason Gardner on the other end do. With all the contact today, an interesting whistle on the call against Gardner. Very little contact, his third. UConn with the ball, trailing by only one. Being very patient right here. And again, I think they want that ball in Butler's hands. He's open now inside. They can't get it to him. Okafor unable to connect. And Bynum did a great block and out job. He rolled Butler right out underneath the basket. 90 seconds to go. Arizona with the ball and a one-point lead. It's like they're trying to play a little two-man game now with Walton and Gardner getting some high screens and rolls. 
I'm hoping that Stoudemire can work himself free with that depth three point touch of his. Gardner with Brown. There's the screen, and there's the roll. And there's Bynum blocked by Robertson and controlled by Butler. He traveled with no whistle to Lee Brown at the other end. And Yoko right down. Might have had two travels on the play, but maybe Jim Calhoun is getting some makeups here. 21 points now for Brown, and it's a one point lead for Yukon. Timeout, 56 seconds to go. Good pass. Gardner tries to break in front, and Brown has that ability to take it to the basket. Talik Brown, whose uh, career high is 21, has matched that today. You notice one thing, he didn't put his finger up to his mouth to say to <laughs> quiet the crowd. That one didn't work before, so he just gets back on defense. And Butler, uh, because of the change in action going from one end to the other. Butler in the backcourt was having trouble controlling himself. Looked as if he traveled. No one saw it. And uh, UConn with a 98-97 lead. And Dick, in fairness to the officials on that, Butler might not have had good possession of the ball. You know, it kind of was rolling around his hands. A reminder, tomorrow on CBS, Max Bickford gets a wake-up call from his doctor. Now he's on a mission to fight the fat. Oscar winner Richard Dreyfuss stars in an all-new <laughs> education of Max Bickford Sunday here on CBS, America's most watched. So they found themselves down six right away. Good composure to come back and get in this thing. And have the lead with 53 seconds of clock going here in overtime. Walton to Gardner. He'll fire the three and a short this time. Rips down the rebound. 44 seconds to go. That was a set play for Gardner. Throwing the ball right over the top of Anderson's screen. About 13 seconds difference between the shot and game clocks. So they Brown with Gardner. Has to be careful about a five-second call here. He just does beat the clout. Pass in low to Johnny Selby, who scores. And it's 100 to 97. Selby in double figures with 10. Now, Selby didn't make the clean catch, but uh, he's tough inside. 10 seconds to go, and Arizona wow. needs the wow. three. And the foul. Three shots. Shot. Three shots. Sure. Is he outside the line? Yes. Smart play by Jason Gardner. Felt the contact. Oh, they're calling it two. They're calling it two. I thought he was definitely behind the line. He was oh, he's behind the line. the line. That's the three. They've got to go over and take a look at That's that. That's reviewable by rule. They can go over and look at it. Absolutely. That was not even close. It was right in front of Lute Olsen. You would imagine he would ask for a look on the replay. The only thing I could say is they say he was fouled before the shot, but I don't think so. Talik Brown is... Uh, out with his fifth personal foul and leaves with a career high 21. See, they could be saying that he was fouled before the shot, Dick. Otherwise, it would be definitely three. So that's got to be their call because they're not even looking at it as to whether he was over the line or not. They're saying he was fouled before the shot. 10.4 seconds and down by three. Miss this one now. Yeah, you got to so try bad. to miss this one. If you made that one, I think you should have tried to hit two. And Lute Olson's going to talk uh, over the situation as they Wildcats call a timeout. A remarkable game with swings from one end to the other. See, you can see on this play that there's no question that Jason is behind the three. But here's where the foul is called, and they're saying he's not in the act of shooting. He eventually took the shot. But the call on the base of the officials is that the call was made prior to him being in the act of shooting. A reminder of the Phoenix Open, uh, the late start as we move toward golf coverage because of this overtime period in Tucson. Uh, always uh, some great shot making on that Phoenix. Uh, ball. Was that a tuck? I mean, did he have it like, uh, you know, in there? And then well, it was trying to tuck it, but uh, the ball didn't come free or he would have called it an incomplete. Pass. I never did really understand. I know a little bit about this game, but I still don't understand the time. Don't, don't send me down that road. <laughs> so here's Gardner with three-point deficit and uh, undoubtedly will try to hit one up high off the rim and hope that his teammate can rebound. No! He missed. Now, are they going to go for a foul? a foul? I guess. It shows you what I know about strategy. Well, you know, with the opportunity to take a three, 
And I thought they wanted possession, and there's Stoudemire. Didn't realize the man was behind him. And the pass is thrown away. The pressure defense and Karan Butler threw it out of bounds. Now, they're also looking and saying, don't take any time off this clock because it touched nobody. And just like we had at the end of the game. So two-point game, 198, and Olsen will spend another time out and set up what he hopes will be at least a tying shot and maybe a winning three. Well, with 10 seconds to go, you really don't have to think strictly of three here. You know, you take it the best opportunity you've had. You, if it gets down to like two, three seconds, you got to think only three. But here, with 10 seconds, you might have a chance to see the ball thrown out of bounds. Almost exactly the passing lane that we saw at the end of regulation. Channing Fry, the freshman center, doing a great job in hawking uh, Butler as he inbounded the ball. Big wide wingspan there by Fry made it very difficult to find an opening. Biggest lead of the game, UConn in the first half led by as much as 12. Arizona led very early at 4-2 and didn't uh, reclaim it until uh, the second half. And then it's gone back and forth. Each team would open a three, four, five point lead only to be caught by the opposition. And here the visitors from uh, Stores, Connecticut have a two point edge, 10 point, 10 point four seconds to go. And Arizona looking for the winning shot. And all you're trying to do here at home is to get a tie, play for another overtime. You don't worry about threes here. Unless it materializes that the and man's open. Have it, yeah. Got plenty of time here to work for a good shot. Stoudemire to Gardner, and he can go into the backcourt and field the ball. He takes it in, and then out to find him for three. Rebound by Okafor and just holding. Oh, they call it a jump ball situation. And that's and possession, Connecticut. With .9 seconds left, Connecticut with a ball. And just another huge play by the freshman from Houston Biller High School, Emeka Okafor. I'm going to give him credit in this respect, too. Jason Gardner has learned enough in this game. You better not drive down that middle against Okafor, and that's why he made the pass to the outside. But Bynum did have a good look for three. And just under one second as Butler gets it into Okafor. He hugs it. It's over. And what a victory by the UConn Huskies. Yes, sir, they deserve to celebrate as they rally in overtime and defeat the number 10 team in the country on its home court. One play. What will happen tonight? He's still got time for more. Here are the Chevrolet players of the game. Emeka Okafor, nine blocks. We had him with 12. Would be a triple-double for the freshman. Luke Walton, 18.7 boards and eight assists for the University of Arizona. Chevrolet makes a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and assist those in financial need. We go to the Phoenix Open, the third round coverage right after a few words. So for Billy Packer, Dick Kemper, so long from the McHale Center, where UConn has defeated Arizona 100 to 98. Next up, third round coverage, Phoenix Open, presented by Xerox. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA Basketball Championship.